Hello and welcome to this video on tree search. I'm Till. Um, this uh, uh, video is not mandatory to watch. Um, everything that's covered here will also be covered in the lecture. The video's purpose is for me to prepare for the lecture, for you to be able to see again the things that were covered in the lecture if you missed something or didn't quite understand, or if you want to have a sneak preview. Okay, so the content covered in this lecture, I haven't really found a good source. You can uh, check Wikipedia, which I think is fairly uh, well explaining. Otherwise, section 8.11 is covering um, the most important part, which is the Monte Carlo research, uh, which I explain in this lecture. Okay, in order to do uh, a tree search, let's see what, what a game tree actually is. Um, so here I want to explain it on the example of tic-tac-toe. Uh, tic-tac-toe, you have a 3 times 3 board and these are the possible winning shapes. Uh, so you have a root, which is just the empty board, and then you have uh, uh, nine children, which correspond to the different positions uh, on which you can play. And then each of those uh, uh, nodes has, again, eight children and so on. And then, uh, yeah, you can play this game until either one person wins. Um, there is a tie or there's a tie, yes. So the leaves are the terminal states um, where, um, yeah, a reward will be given either plus one, minus one or zero, um, depending on one. You can set the rewards as you like. The depth of the tree is uh, the number of uh, steps you have to go in order to reach uh, the lowest leaf that's furthest away from the root. The branching factor says how many children a node has. So there's like a distinction between branching factor of one node, which is just the number of children. Uh, people usually talk about the typical branching factor. And then there's, of course, the max branching factor. Uh, which is like the largest branching factor, in which, uh, in this case, it would be nine. And a state or, uh, would be yeah, uh, uh, something that encodes all the information you need to in order to make the next move, and it would be a node of this game tree. Okay, so this is, is a game tree for tic-tac-toe, and uh, let me show you another example. There's this game called Geography. Um, there's a starting node, and then players alternatingly go to a, a next node from, from the previous node in some graph. Um, and then those nodes are eaten up. And at some point, uh, you cannot make a move, and then you lost the game because this node here doesn't have an adjacent node, which is not eaten up yet. Um, so the graph has, let's say, has n nodes, a maximum degree d, and then we can determine uh, basic features of it. So we can, for instance, say the number of states is at most 2 to the n times n, so 2 to the n because every node can be taken or not taken, and times n because you have to remember uh, which is the last node you've been in, so there are n possibilities. Uh, so the, note that this is a rough estimate and, of course, not tight. The branching factor is D because, yeah, you can have at most uh, max degree options. Uh, so the max branching factor is, is the number of, um, uh, is exactly the degree. The depth of the game tree would be N because you go at most uh, and steps are actually N minus one because we are already given a starting node. The leaves are, are those game states in which you cannot move anymore. And the rewards you could set to minus one and plus one um, because there are no ties in this game. Um, there is always a winner. So here, these would be the basic facts about the game tree of geography. Um, so the first assignment I want you to do in class, and of course we skip it again um, in this video, or you can do it, is check out the game of checkers and the game of nim. So you can uh, find them on the internet, so let's say on Wikipedia, you can find the rules. Um, and NIM, I want you to look at the configuration 555, and I want you to determine the um, maximum branching factor, the depths, 
um, how does the leaf look like, um, the, what is the total number of states, and how would you set rewards. Uh, post, uh, post on Teams your, your answer. So I want you to pr produce an answer, post it on Teams, and I, I can look at all the answers also if I'm not capable of going to your group. Again, in this video, uh, we skip it, and please don't post anything on Teams before the lecture for, for this assignment. Okay, um, the next thing you need to know is what is the um, value function or a score function or a static evaluation or approximate value, often denoted as v. It's a function which from each state goes to the real numbers. Um, so any such function you could uh, consider as a value function, but the underlying idea is that states which are better for you get a higher value and states that are worse for you get a lower value. You may swap this if you alternate between uh, um, your player and the opponent player. So maybe there's a maximizing player and a minimizing player, so the minimizing player would want to have a lower value. Um, but it does not need to be correct, and most most uh, value functions will not be correct. And that's why it's sometimes called approximate value, because the true value is like tells you whether you actually win or you actually lose. Um, but because we almost never have access to the true value, we, we, we may not always need to say approximate value. Um, and score function would, would be like a different term for it. And I, I will say later why, why you may use this term. Okay, let's let's have an example of a, of, a, of such a value function. Um, so let's look again at the game tic-tac-toe. And what we can do is we can uh, say, for instance, okay, if we're already in a winning state, so we just count how many how many winning states we have, then uh, this we multiply times 32. Um, and then if we have an almost winning state, right, we're just like, okay, almost can finish this, then we count those occasions as well. And we subtract the number of occasions for a winning state for the opponent, um, or an almost winning state for the opponent as well. And uh, um, in that way, we can, for every state, determine how good it is. So you think like, okay, if we already won, why should I want to assign um, a value to this um, or, or, or some number to this? Because you look ahead into the future, you're not just looking at the state you're currently in, but you also want to give um, an evaluation for a state that can come later. And you may ask, why do I need to have this high multiplicative factor? Well, you want this to be really dominant over these almost winning states, right? You, you really want to say, if I actually won, this is better than I have almost won. But you could imagine that you could have almost won in, in lots of different ways, and then that still should be worse than you, you, you have won. So this, this would be um, a possible value function. It gives you for each state, it gives you a number. Um, but uh, we can also have a different way of evaluating a position or, or um, a state. What we can just do, we can do 100 rollouts with a random agent, uh, average, average out how often we won, and that could be a value that we assign to that position. And in that way, it may be um, a little bit strange because in a mathematical sense, you could say, well, there's some randomness involved in determining the value. Um, but you know you can give it an algorithm and it, it returns you some uh, some real number, and I mean it may not be truly telling you how good it is, but uh, it, it, it tells you something. So that would be another uh, another value function. Um, okay, so now I have another assignment for you. Uh, compute the value for um, the score for those three boards according to the score function that I just gave you. And then I want you to generalize this principle um, of that score function as I described to you um, for those winning shapes. So think about how you um, may want to implement it the way you may want to define it for, for this, uh, for a five times five board for these winning shapes. Again, here there could be really possible solutions. Um, again, post your answer on Teams so that I can see it. And again, we skip 
this assignment in the video, but you're happy to, you're, you can, of course, do it at home. Uh, the next term you would need to know, and that's really, uh, again, one of the central terms in uh, reinforcement learning, is the term of a policy. Um, so a policy can be either deterministic or probabilistic. A, de a deterministic policy for each state would say what to do. I would say, you now make a move here or make a move there. Uh, often um, the, d the difference between a policy and just like the action and and the next state for our examples isn't that big because when we do these actions we already know what will be the next state but we can have a deterministic policy but the environment could react in a different way but in our cases the distinction isn't that big a probabilistic policy would be we don't say what action but we say well 50 percent maybe we do this 50 percent we do that um, so, for instance, just a random agent would be a possible policy, so uniformly random that does uh, every possibility with equal probability. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, so that would be uh, two different types of policies um, that exist. Okay, here, in order to, to learn this better, uh, the next assignment. Um, so imagine I have a value function how could I get a policy out of it? Um, you can think about this game tic-tac-toe. I told you uh, a, a very simple score function. So now how, how would this give you a policy? And it could give you a policy, both a deterministic policy, but it could also give you a probabilistic policy. So think about how would you describe a probabilistic policy once given a value function. And don't make it too complicated. Really think of of something very simple. Um, but there's a, um, a more complicated way. Imagine you have given a, you already have a policy, okay, and you, you know this policy is awesome. How can you determine values uh, for different states? Um, so yeah, this is, is more complicated and there's more effort to do this. But the description of it is, is not so hard. So you can, uh, I want you to think about this um, and write down your answer. And at last, um, I want you to think about, if you think in terms of reinforcement learning, learning from self-play, why is a random policy better? It may also be better to play a a against certain agents, uh, but it also be better for learning. Um, and I want you to think about why and write down your answer. Again, post your answer on MS Teams. Okay, um, now that we know what a game tree is, we know what a volley function is, we know what a policy is, we are ready to think about um, uh, to search this game tree. Search game tree. Ha ha ha. Okay, so the simplest way to search a game tree is minimax. Uh, we will not implement Minimax in the practical assignment, but you should really, really have seen Minimax in this lecture, even if you may have seen it before. Okay, so um, Minimax, you have two players. You have a maximizing player and a minimizing player, and you need to have a score function or a value function, uh, so-called aesthetic evaluation for each state. So here um, uh, I write it abstractly. We don't know what the underlying game is. Um, and uh, so if you would just look at the layer below, right, then the maximizing player would take um, the option to the left here because it gives the highest score. So that, that would be some simple way to determine um, a score. But then let's look a little bit deeper because then maybe uh, our score function may not be uh, ideal and we can look uh, one layer below. So let's do this. We look at those two options here and the minimizing player, of course, uh, takes the one which is lower and we say we back propagate that value to this node. And then the same with, with minimizing um, four or three. Um, and then uh, the minimizing player would take option three and so on here, the minimizing player would take option two. And then, uh, again, the maximizing player can choose among those three things recursively and, and take option three. And you see that now um, 
we have this back propagation, um, which we do in a, a, a bottom up fashion. Um, and uh, we um, uh, and, and we, we determine the action then, this would be the action that uh, we take, which would be different to the action that uh, would have been taken if we just uh, looked at the score function on the layer above. Okay, so minimax is pretty simple and straightforward. So um, we have a, a little assignment for you to it. I write um, recursive to the code for, for minimax. So what you need is, uh, you need to have a current state that you put in. You need to have um, a depth that you want to look at. And you want to put in whether you're currently, uh, which player is doing a turn, the minimizing player or the maximizing player. And the depth tells you, yeah, how much, how deep you want to go. And you can assume you can have somehow, you know, access to all the children of each state. And you can do, of course, a static evaluation if you want to. Um, and as a second task in this assignment, I want you to, um, to do the man and max on this simple example, so it's really trivial. Uh, but I want you to, to take a close look at it and I want you to make some observation. Uh, you can note, so here's a question mark, but do you really need to know what is here in order to um, determine um, to really run in the max? Um, well, you don't, and you, you should think about why not. Again, post your answer on Teams, and you don't have to do it in this video. Okay, and uh, so now that we know minimax, um, there is this alpha beta pruning, and this alpha beta pruning is very simple. Just don't uh, go into into those uh, subtasks, into into those branches where you don't need to evaluate. You may you as you've seen in the previous assignment, there are some uh, 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 notes that you don't need to evaluate, so, so don't. And that's all that Minimax, uh, that alpha beta pruning is doing. It's doing Minimax and it skips those where you don't have to do it. Um, and because in, in last lecture I will, or in this course, we will not go into alpha beta pruning because we have a slightly different emphasis. Okay, so now let's go to Monte Carlo tree search, which will also be your practical assignment. Note that uh, Monte Carlo is, I think, a place which was famous for having uh, legal casinos. Um, and so, because, and then lots of randomized algorithms, they're called after Monte Carlo. They're like, oh, this is a Monte Carlo algorithm because there are some randomness. Um, and casinos, they're kind of having randomness. But you will see um, this Monte Carlo algorithm doesn't really have randomness. But I've read that. It's called Monte Carlo because you average over previous um, uh, data that you've seen, over, over lots of samples that you've seen. Um, but for me, it's a little bit of a misnomer, but it has some tradition and that's why it's called like that. Okay, so let me explain how this Monte Carlo tree search works. Monte Carlo tree search. Um, and it's a very ge general algorithm or general principle. And it has these four components. Um, selection, expansion, simulation, and backpropagation. So, um, so you have this huge game tree, but you explore only part of it, and that's your the tree that you you um, that you maintain. And let's say you initialize some data already, you you, you searched something already, then uh, you want to go for another search round. So you you search by rounds, and in the first search round. Uh, you, you start always in the root and then you select one of the children where you say, ah, there, there I want to explore a little bit more. And, and then you go to one of the children according to some criteria that depend on the data that you have in your notes. And it's very generic. You, you, you can have lots of different ways to do that selection. And then again, you, you select one of his children up until you come to a note that you haven't explored yet and you do an expansion. So you increase the, the tree that you're searching for. Um, okay, so you do an expansion 
And then you do a simulation. So expansion just means you, you, you initialize some data here uh, and extend the tree that you have, that you, you want to call tree. And then you do a simulation. And simulation is just uh, calling uh, a score function or a value function, which tells you something about how this good, how good this tree is, uh, how good this node is. And, and one possible way would be you do a rollout um, with some agents or some policies, and then you see uh, at the end of a, uh, a reward. Um, but you could have all the different types of simulations. And then the result that you have from that simulation you you move back to to the top so you say oh well i learned something about this node and then you say well now i know also something about this node and now i know also something uh, about the root how, how good that state is actually and and that process is back propagation as we've already seen with the minimax algorithm and then we do another round of of uh, monte carlo tree search so we like start here and then we go down and then we may explore a node that we haven't seen. We, we do um, a simulation and we backpropagate that information. Um, and then we could go in another round until we say, okay, we, we stop. So one of the good things about this uh, Monte Carlo research is, is very generic. You have lots of different ways how you, how you do the selection and the simulation and what type of data you store. And you can stop at any time. You can any time say, now I stop. And then you can determine what would be the final action that you do. Um, OK, so what are your choices um, for the selection? There are two obvious choices, which is you could use an upper confidence bound. Um, so we have this already. Or you could use epsilon greedy. But you could also use uh, that in combination with some policy that you have already from somewhere else. Um, the data that you store, um, again, it can be very different. It could be, for instance, the number of, of visits, uh, the total number of visits, the number of visits of that node. It could be the accumulated reward that you back propagated through this. Uh, that would be natural choices. And then what you can do a simulation. Um, so you can do random rollouts. You can call a score function. And you can uh, uh, roll out with some different agents. Um, and later we will see also other options that you can do. Um, but for the assignment, um, random rollouts with random agents, uniformly random, will be sufficient. OK, so let's go through one example. Here we use upper. Uh, oh no, I'm actually not entirely sure what we use here. So we, we start with counting the number. Um, so the data we will have, we count the number of occurrences. We have that we visit a uh, total number of visits. And for each node, we count the number of visits. And uh, we also count the total uh, reward that we accumulated. So we start with a selection. We go to the root. We haven't explored the root. Well, make an expansion, explore the root do a simulation. So here we do some random rollout. We get a reward of five. And then we store the five and as, as a total reward we get, and the one as the total number of visits, uh, and which we backpropagate. And well, the backpropagation is simple because we, we just went to the root. And then again, we do some selection. We select one of the child. Since we haven't seen the children, we just randomly select one. We uh, store some data in the children. Um, so again, we don't have any data yet in the child, so we just initialize it with, say, 0, 0. Um, we do some simulation. Here again, that would be some, some rollout. We get a reward of 1, and then we backpropagate it. So here, we would have 1 visit and a total reward of 1. And for the root, we would have the reward, total reward goes up from 5 to 6. And the visits go up from uh, 1 to 2. And again, we do a selection, uh, an expansion where we initialize the state. We do a rollout, which gives us a reward. And we, we uh, add up the rewards. Note that I did a, uh, an error here. We should go from 6 to 8 and not from 6 to 9, but that's OK. And the total visit count is 3. And here, the total visit count is 1. And then again, we do a selection. And clearly, on the right side, we, we would have a better 
way because user total reward is higher. So if you use upper confidence bound, you would rather go into to this. Then we look at these children. We do an expansion. We do a simulation, a back propagation, and it starts again. Um, and and then we would say, well, now we have these these two options, and and at some point we we have to determine where we want to go. And we can't stop at any time. Uh, yes, yeah, so we could, could do it infinitely often, but we can also stop at any time that we like. Um, so here we uh, uh, would we go to the left or to the right? Uh, yeah, I guess we go. Oh wait, would we go to the left? Oh yeah. So ha, so this is tricky because uh, so usually we would want to maximize. Right, but this white player is minimizing, so we we would need to uh, look at the negative of all the rewards if we are the minimizing player. So we would go to the left. This is what this slide wants to tell us. Um, yeah, as I mentioned already, Monte this this algorithm has no randomness involved in it, right? Um, so it comes originally from this Monte Carlo from having some randomness. Maybe the first version of Monte Carlo research had some randomness involved in it, um, but the algorithm as I presented actually does not have randomness in it. But often Monte Carlo is also used for um, you average over samples that you've taken. And maybe that's why uh, this term sticked, or maybe it's, it's now commonly used. Um, OK, and this would be the last assignment for that class. Um, and I think that should really prepare really well for um, the practical assignment that lies ahead of you. Um, so think about the game tic-tac-toe. Use for selection the upper confidence bound with a constant c equals 1. For the simulation, use the score function, as I explained earlier. Start with this state in your root, and then do 10 steps of this Monte Carlo tree search. So you really have to go also some, some uh, uh, not just uh, the root has four children, as you can see, but you have to go a little bit deeper. Uh, do 10 steps of the Monte Carlo tree search. I mean, it's really 10, 10 of these uh, whole things. Um, you may want to use a computer in order to uh, um, compute this upper confidence bound, and then post your answer on Teams. OK. That would be it for, for the lecture. Again, on the video, we skipped the, the assignment. Um, I'm looking forward to see you in the lecture. Bye.